guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm answering your questions that you asked me on Instagram. That's at Federico Talks Watches. Go give me a follow. When you see the Q&A picture, ask your question, and I will do my best to answer it. Everything from, is Longines currently all hype or great watches? And what has the Ferrari ownership experience been like for me? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. I'm still wearing the Breguet Marine. Absolutely love it. And also, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com, the best place on earth to buy pre-owned watches. We just got in a beautiful Moser chocolate dial manual wine rose gold. Absolutely beautiful. A JLC sector dial Master Geographic, as rare as a golden goose. And a Gerald Genta, that's right, Gerald Genta. Retro Sport Jump Hour, one of the coolest and quirkiest sports watches around. All at DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. All right, guys, well, these are the questions you asked me. If I'm looking down, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to get through the questions. The first one is from WatchIt88. Best meal you had on your trip? Well, guys, if you don't know, I just came back from Spain to visit my parents. Yes, I'm Italian, but my parents lived in Spain. And I grew up in Madrid. The best meal I had on my trip was at Taverna Laredo, where I had baby rabbit riblets. Uh, not exactly vegetarian friendly, but absolutely beautiful little riblets. And there must have been like 14 rabbits on that plate because there was like 150 riblets. I'm not sure what the math is, but absolutely delicious. Taverna Laredo. Next, Terptogram. A nerdy question, but is the chronograph complication tied to how fast or slow the movement itself is running at of the watch. Uh, I, I imagine you mean like the, the beat rate, and if, if so, then yes, it is generally tied to the beat rate. So a 21,600 beat rate movement, chronograph would run at that beat, 28,800, so on and so forth. It would equal the beat generally. Is there a way to change that? I think there is, but typically it follows the beat rate. Steph.Slav. Hey, Fed, hope you're keeping well. Thank you, bro uh, brother. Do you think Breguet will ever make a comeback of sorts and be appreciated the way the other members of the Holy Trinity are? Thanks. No. Uh, I love them. I think they're better than most of the Holy Trinity, but Patek, AP, um, who's the third one in the Holy Trinity? God, it must not be Vacheron, I believe. I, I don't really think it's, it's relevant, to be honest, but Patek and AP are both kind of independent, and Breguet is still doing some more commercially viable things, and Vacheron is a little bit more accessible. I love Breguet. I think they're the most beautiful watch on earth. I think they keep up a lot of the old arts, you know, hand-painted enamel dials, things like that. But no, I don't think they'll make a comeback, especially because the Swatch Group is not particularly loved and they own Breguet. Manny146. Fed, good to see you on your travel. Thanks, brother. Hope you had a great time. I certainly did. I see Longines is getting a lot of love at the moment. What are your thoughts? My thoughts is good for Longines. I mean, listen, they're an entry-level brand, so they can't exactly make high-complication watches, but they're going through their archive and creating some beautiful vintage-inspired pieces. Uh, the Heritage 1946, their, their chronographs, I mean, their legend diver. Longines is making good, at a based entry-level luxury watches with historical kind of feeling with their cases. Are they always perfect? No. Uh, do I think they deserve the props? Yes, but I'm not going to lie. They can be a little bit boring for somebody slightly more experienced. Allball55 asks, Hey, Fed, love your content. When are you going to do another drive-along video? How has the Ferrari ownership experience been? Thanks, Allball. Well, listen, I, I will do another drive-along video soon, I think. Do you guys like those videos? Genuinely let me know. View-wise, they do well, but do you guys actually enjoy that content, or is it a little douchey? Um, leave a comment below. The ownership experience has been overall pretty fantastic. I own a 2012 Ferrari California with, you know, not so low mileage. It's not a garage queen. I drive it quite a bit. I mean, I probably drive it about four or 5,000 miles a year. But it's also been very expensive. I did valve cover, uh, I did, uh, well, what did I do? I did new spark plugs. I did a new valve cover gasket, a new parking brake, some transmission work, a little bit of a leak. It's been expensive, you know, well over, you know, well into the five figures in repairs. But, you know, if you can't afford one, then don't get one. All things considered, I love driving that thing. It's um, not everybody's favorite Ferrari, but it certainly is one of mine. Brian Amorin. How many Ming for Messina Lab watches do you think actually were made available to the public raffle? 
Seems that a lot of high profiles were able to acquire one. No comment, Brian. I have a whole video, not necessarily about that, but on this fiasco release soon. Um, you know, it's definitely some funny business going on. And um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was invited to buy the pieces. So yeah, some high profile people definitely get, you know, more access than others. But uh, I'm going to keep my comments to myself until I have a more, you know, until I have a more polished video to put out on the subject. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching the show. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.